Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 24th day of March, and it is Friday, and today's topic is titled, Going and Not Knowing Simple Obedience. Amen. And before we get started on all that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and he too can be your Lord and Savior today if you're not saved already. And uh, if you're saved and watching this, I hope this is a help and a blessing and encouragement to you to keep going and serving the Lord. Amen. So, praise God uh, for um, the Holy Bible. Amen. All right. So, we're going to start with today's scripture song and get into that and then the topic for the Baptist bread and then the daily strength and then the hymn and a special hymn today. So, amen. <clears throat> All right. So, we're going to start with Jeremiah 2013 from the scripture song CD with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. So, here we go. <clears throat> All right. Jeremiah twenty thirteen. Sing, Sing unto the Lord, Lord. praise ye the Lord, for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. Amen. <clears throat> Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord, for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. Sing unto the Lord. Unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord, for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. Sing unto the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Good song there, hymn, uh, scripture song. So put that back to yesterday's and do that again towards the end of the broadcast. Now it's time to get into today's topic for Friday. March 24th, titled again, Going and Not Knowing, Simple Obedience. And here we have Genesis 12, 1. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of my of, of thy country, excuse me, get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Genesis 12, 1. So, told uh, Abram, to get out and to go, <clears throat> and Abram uh, obeyed and followed and wasn't sure where he was going, but uh, trusted the Lord, and so we can do the same thing. Amen. So the Lord says, uh, go and do something, and uh, you're not sure uh, where you're going and why you're doing it, just go and do it. Amen. If it's uh, if it's something that he's uh, wanting you to do, uh, obey his, his word. Amen. If he's calling you to a certain uh, mission field or a certain place, go and tell somebody about Jesus today then you should go, amen, and not uh, fight and kick and say, eh, I don't want to do that. I'll go here, but I'm not going to go there, All right? So just be obedient, amen? If we could learn that more, we'd be better off. <clears throat> All right, so today's author is D.O. That would be the initials for, I think that's Don Owen. Uh, yep, Don Owen. He is retired and Lighthouse Baptist Church in San Antonio, Texas. So... Let me read you what he wrote here <clears throat> on this topic of going and not knowing simple obedience. Going, not knowing. This statement consistently occurs in different forms throughout Scripture. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went. Hebrews eleven eight, And he writes here, I rejoice that some have stepped out and have gone by faith. Amen. Only eternity will reveal the full results of your obedience. We go not knowing what a day, a week, a month may bring forth. As we go, let us be sure of some things. So here's some things we need to be sure of when we go. Be sure it is the Lord who is speaking to you, right? Amen. Make sure it's the Lord speaking to you. Uh, be sure your decisions do not contradict Scripture. Be sure your motives are unselfish and pure. Be sure to maintain a testimony before the Lord. So again, these things that we should <clears throat> um, be sure of, again, is be sure it is the Lord who is speaking to you. And you can know uh, whether or not uh, he is speaking to you by going to Scripture. Amen. And if you're being burdened to go to a certain uh, place, country, uh, down the road, down the street, in your neighborhood, um, go. If it's the Lord uh, telling you to go. But if he's going and telling you to go somewhere you shouldn't go, well, then don't listen, because it might not be the Lord, most likely. Be sure your decisions don't 
Uh, do not uh, contradict scripture. Amen. Be sure your motives are unselfish and pure. Be sure to maintain a testimony before the Lord. May these uh, lampposts guide us all as we go not knowing. <clears throat> Amen. Knowing not what the day may bring forth. Uh, so it says, And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in uh, drought and uh, make uh, fat thy bones. So thy soul in uh, the uh, drought. <clears throat> so again, And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in the drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of these shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the, uh, the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Isaiah 58, 11, and 12. <clears throat> we uh, understand that's uh, talking to the nation of Israel, but we can still take this and apply it in many other ways. Uh, amen. By going and doing, praise the Lord. So let's uh, uh, take heed to these things. Amen. All right. So again, let me repeat these things. Uh, be sure it's the Lord who's speaking to you. Be sure your decisions do not contradict Scripture. Be sure your motives are unselfish and pure. Be sure to maintain a testimony before the Lord. Amen. So that's the Baptist bread. Good advice there. And now I'll go ahead and get into the Daily Strength, Volume 1. Uh, topic today as we continue through this uh, weekly topic of wise decisions <clears throat> and today is day 48 Friday and it's titled difficult decisions so we have a very lengthy uh, um, passage here from number 16 1 all the way to um, verse 33 so let me start reading this to you <clears throat> so it says here in six, uh, number 16 1 now Korah the son of Ishar the son of uh, Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of uh, Eli Eliah, hold on a second, uh, yeah, uh, Eliab, uh, and On, the son of uh, Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, two hundred and fifty princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, even every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face, and he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his, and who is holy, and will cause him to come come near unto him, even him whom he hath chosen, will he cause to come near unto him. This do, take you censors, Korah, and all his company, <clears throat> and put fi uh, fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow, and it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, Here, I pray you, ye sons of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you, that the God of Israel hath separated you from the congregation of Israel, to bring you near to himself, to do service of the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them? And he hath brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood also? For which cause both Thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Elab, which said, We will not come up. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of a land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us? Moreover, Thou hast not brought us up into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or give us an, uh, give it, or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? Will we not come up? And Moses was very wroth, 
and said unto the Lord, Respect not that thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they, and Aaron, tomorrow, and take every man his censer, and put incense in them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, two hundred and fifty censers, thou also and Aaron, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer, and put a fire in them, and laid incense thereon, and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they gat up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out, and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives, and their sons, and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up with all the ap, ap, uh, with all the appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord, right? And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all their goods, they and all that appertained to them, went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. Mm. So, praise the Lord that he doesn't do that stuff today, or else we'd all be in trouble. <laughs> so, make sure you're not against the Lord, but for the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. So that was that uh, passage there about Korah, and uh, them being against the Lord. And now i got introductory thoughts. It says, As Moses led Israel out of Egypt, and on their journey toward the land of promise, he faced almost constant opposition. Numbers chapter 16 chronicles one such instance instance in great detail. Korah openly questioned and opposed Moses' leadership, forcing him to bring the matter before Almighty God. The Lord said he would answer this challenge directly and reveal his choice between Moses and Korah. Not only did God choose Moses, but he also indicated that Korah would be judged by the earth opening up and swallowing him alive. Before the arrival of God's judgment, the people were instructed to choose by separating from Korah. So there's always warning before the judgment. <clears throat> Amen. So take heed to that warning and turn and come to the right side. So uh, so that Korah uh, would be judged um, by the earth opening up and swallowing him alive. Before the arrival of God's judgment, the people were instructed to choose by separating from Korah. Judgment fell as the earth opened up, swallowing alive those who followed Korah along with all their possessions. The earth simply closed back up. Interestingly, a brief Bible study, for instance, Psalm 88, reveals that the sons of Korah chose to obey uh, God by separating from their father. Several subtitles in the book of Psalms, uh, like that found in Psalm 88, indicates or indicate these sons followed God and his servant and survived God's judgment. The devil presents a few choices more difficult than choosing between God and family. Hmm, interesting. <clears throat> so, that was introductory thoughts. 
Now I've got devotional thoughts. First is for children. It says, unfortunately, some children have parents that do not love God. These parents ask their children to lie or steal for them. They even make, uh, may make fun of them for going to church. What should the children do if they love God and truly want to serve him? Hmm. And then we got for everyone. Do you, uh, do you think it was easy for the sons of Korah to walk away from their father and stand against what was wrong? Uh, what thoughts might have crossed their minds as they made this choice between their father and God? Hmm. Uh, what kind of choices might you one day be forced to make similar to the choice of the sons of Korah? Could you trust God enough to make such a difficult choice? <clears throat> hmm. Uh, never thought about that way. But um, even though Korah uh, and them uh, disobeyed the Lord and went uh, went away and were swallowed up, um, apparently the Lord used it uh, for his glory. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> All right. So prayer thoughts. It says, ask God to help you choose right uh, despite the cost of opposition. Pray that God will give you faith to trust him, and especially during difficult times and trials. Amen. And then today's song is, Who is on the Lord's Side? Good hymn there. And uh, do that tomorrow, since I already picked uh, today's um, special hymn, which is from which was from the other day, um, Holy Bible Book Divine. This will be the special one we do today. So we'll do that one tomorrow. Uh, who's on, Who is on the Lord's Side? Amen. All right, so good stuff there from the Daily Strength. And now I'll go ahead and <clears throat> get into the hymns for today. And today's hymn, and then the one that I picked for the special from yesterday, uh, Holy Book, um, what was it titled? Uh, Holy Bible Book Divine. So here we go. This is um, today's hymn, Hallelujah for the Blood. And this is another one about the blood of Christ, written by... Uh, Leela and uh, and Morris, uh, 1862 to 1929, writing as Mrs. Charles H. Morris. And uh, then we have her again, uh, Leela N. Morris, 1862 to 1929, composing as Mrs. Char uh, Charles H. Moses, or Mo Morris, sorry, I'm, I'm got Moses on my mind, because <laughs> I just read about him. Uh, so Morris, Charles H. Morris, Mrs. Charles H. Morris. And so I'll let you listen to this first. Uh, I was listening to it earlier, and it sounds like it might be easy to sing, but I'm going to listen to it again, and then we'll go ahead and try it. So here we go. <laughs> Try this here. Amen. <coughs> here we go. Hallelujah for the blood, for the sin cleansing fountain, for the Lamb has been slain, and the ransom price paid. Fully cancelled was the dead when on Calvary's mountain. All the sins of this world upon Jesus were laid. There was no harm to save. 
There was no I to pity Until Jesus our Savior From glory came down He was mighty to save He was strong to deliver He has brought up salvation A robe and a crown Hallelujah, hallelujah Sing the triumphant strain Hallelujah for the blood And the lamb that was slain Amen <clears throat> Second stanza Hallelujah for the blood Sing for joy all ye nations and rejoice that the work of redemption is done. Here is pardon from free for all and a perfect salvation through the sin cleansing blood of the crucified one. There was no arm to save, there was no eye to pity. Until Jesus our Savior from glory came down He was mighty to save He was strong to deliver He has brought us salvation A robe and a crown Hallelujah, hallelujah Sing the triumphant strain Hallelujah for the blood and the lamb that was slain. Amen. I like the refrain there. <clears throat> All right, last stanza. Hallelujah for the blood. Hallelujah forever. We shall sing it anew. In the kingdom of God, where the anthems of delight shall be silent, no, never, evermore. Hallelujah for Christ and the blood. There was no arm to save, there was no eye to pity. Until Jesus, our Savior, from glory came down. He was mighty to save. He was strong to deliver. He has brought us salvation, a robe and a crown. Hallelujah, hallelujah, sing the triumphant strain. Hallelujah for the blood and the lamb that was slain. Amen. I like that part where you go deep a little bit at the first part of the refrain where it says, There was no arm to save, there was no eye to pity, until Jesus our... And you get, Amen. And it picks up. So, praise the Lord. A good hymn there. I like that one. So... Maybe you'll like that one too, amen? Alright, so that was Hallelujah for the Blood, and I'll give you the references here. No story for this one. <clears throat> Alright, so stanza 1, we have Ephesians 1, 7, 1 Peter 1, 19, and 1 John 2, 2. Second stanza is Revelation 5, 9, Acts 20, 28, and Romans 3, 24. And then stanza 3 is Revelation 1, 5, and Revelation 11, 15. And then the refrain is Psalm 142, 4. Titus 3, 5, Isaiah 59, 16, and Revelation 5, 12. Amen. <clears throat> All right, so now we'll go over here to the special hymn for today, which was actually the hymn uh, from the Daily Strength uh, book from yesterday. So Holy Bible Book Divine. So let me find the instrumental for this one because I forget how the tune goes. I have to be reminded here sometimes, you know. Amen. All right, so here we go. Uh, Type this in. <clears throat> All 
All right, there it is. All right, let me turn this down for a minute just in case there's commercials. Yep, all right. <clears throat> So, here we go, turn this back up here, <clears throat> and let's play and listen to this instrumental. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, first I gotta give you the, who wrote this first, so, let me go back to the beginning here. Alright, so Holy Bible, Book Divine, and we did this one a while back, and this was um, Hymn 174 from the Psalms and Hymns, the Spiritual Songs book, and this is a spiritual song. The Preciousness of the Scriptures, written by John Burton Sr., 1773 to 1822, and William B. Bradbury, 1816 to 1868. And there is a story, so I'll read the story for this one. Um, amen. <clears throat> so here we go. says holy bible book divine precious treasure thou art mine mine to tell me whence i came mine to teach me what i am amen and now I'll read the story down here at the bottom it says uh, first appearing oh, excuse me <laughs> first appearing in evangelical magazine in 1805 uh, these lines were attributed to nottingham uh, jb as the familiarity and 
uh, reach of the work increased. Uh, however, a search uh, for author J.B. Uh, Nottingham uh, came back empty-handed. Uh, it seemed no such individual of that uh, name existed. A man named uh, John Burton, Jr. of Nottingham, uh, knew the answer. His father had taught him the song as a toddler. The senior Burton, sometimes spelled Barton, uh, served faithfully in the Sunday schools, uh, both in teaching the youth and developing many uh, scriptural materials for use in homes and classrooms. His works include included multiple songbooks and the youth uh, monitor, uh, monitor uh, in verse. Uh, while not a pastor, John uh, Burton or Barton, if you want to say it, uh, made made an impact on uh, countless youths, including his own son, teaching them uh, the greatest uh, them of the greatest treasure of life, the compass for the journey. That vo um, volume above all others, Holy Bible, Book Divine, Amen. So, uh, praise the Lord, um, John Burton or Barton. Uh, this is kind of like uh, William Cowper or Cooper, however you want to pronounce it. So now we get the references here. So stanza one, we have Proverbs thirty verse five and Ephesians two nineteen. Stanza two is Second Timothy three sixteen and Psalms one nineteen one o five. Stanza 3 is John 14.26 and 1 Corinthians 15.55. Stanza 4 is John 3.16 and Ephesians 6.17. Amen. So that was the special hymn today. Holy Book, uh, or Holy Bible Book Divine. <clears throat> Amen. All right, so go back here and put this one to tomorrow's. That side there, and I'll go ahead and do the scripture songs one more time before we wrap it up for today. So, amen. <clears throat> All right, so we'll do yesterday's and then to conclude with today's. So, yesterday's was uh, uh, from the 23rd, uh, was 2 Corinthians 5 17. Amen. So, hold on a second, the uh, thing turned off here on me, so gotta wait for it to load back up. <clears throat> All right, oops. Okay, here we go. One second. Down to 23. And here we go. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, Therefore if any, any man be in Christ, Christ he, he is, is a new creature. creature. Old Old things are passed, passed away. away. Behold, Behold all, all things are become, become new. new. That's right, amen. For if any man, any man, any man, therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Therefore, if any man, any man, any man, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. All right, now today is <clears throat> Jeremiah twenty thirteen. Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord, for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord, for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. Sing unto the Lord. Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord, for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. Sing unto the Lord. 
Amen. <clears throat> All right. Praise the Lord. So, one more thing I wanted to say about uh, the whole issue with uh, Korah and being uh, uh, dropped down in the pit. Um, I'm not sure where uh, Korah went. Uh, many believe that he uh, went to hellfire and uh, died alive in their sin. And some people say that they were protected because they were part of the nation of Israel. So, not really sure. Um, many different teachings on that. So, um, however you believe what happened, um, we won't really know until we get up to heaven and find out for ourselves. So, just uh, better just to, um, if you believe whatever you want to believe about that. Um, so, I know that there was some discussion in that uh, book about uh, where Korah went and uh, stuff from the book of Psalms. So, I guess do your own study on that and I'll have to look at that more myself. So, uh, whatever you believe, you believe that he dropped into, uh, if God opened up the um, earth and dropped him into hellfire or uh, took him down into paradise because paradise was down in the center of the earth at that time. So not really sure. Uh, I know that uh, my pastor one time uh, preached that uh, that they were protected and went up, uh, down to uh, paradise at one point. But then, I don't know, uh, I think maybe he might have changed uh, his stance on that. So, But anyway, however you believe, uh, whatever happened, we don't know. It sounds like they went to uh, hellfire and were... Uh, uh, punished and perish in their sin, but then you re uh, read stuff like that about um, stuff in Psalms, so I'm not sure really exactly what happens, so do your own study and uh, make your own conclusions, and amen, so, alright, if the Bible's clear about it, it's clear about it, if it's not, well, then just gotta take it with a grain of salt, and uh, whatever your opinion is about it, um, no reason to um, separate and uh, break fellowship over stuff like that, so amen, all right, so just wanted to put that out there. Amen. <clears throat> so, all right, so that uh, is the end of today's broadcast. So before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song from Psalm 133.1. And this is a good one here. I had posted this up the other day on my uh, uh, Facebook uh, uh, page. And it says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. Brother James was talking about unity a little bit last night in last night's message um, from different notes from chapter 2 of Colossians. So check that out. And it is good for us to have unity and be unified. Amen. Because that's what the Lord wants is us to be unified as brothers and sisters in Christ and born again believers. Amen. And uh, even if somebody doesn't fully agree with everything that we um, teach and preach, if they're preaching uh, the gospel, the salvation message, well then... Um, uh, they're for us and not against us. Amen. So, amen. All right. So, again, uh, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That's tomorrow's scripture song for the 25th. And then the Baptist Bread devotional topic for tomorrow will be titled, Fly Away or Faith? Question mark. So, Fly Away or Faith? And we have Psalm 55, verses 4 through 6 is the passage. Amen. So, that's tomorrow's Baptist Bread. And then tomorrow's daily strength topic as we conclude uh, this topic for this week on wise decisions. Uh, this one will be the last uh, one for this week. And then we go into another new topic next week. So day 49, Saturday, is titled Wise Decisions Involving Eternal Consequences. All right, so uh, Ruth 1, 1, all the way to verse number, let's see here, verse number... Uh, 18 so Ruth 1 1 through 18 will be the passage the scripture and then uh, so we'll cover that tomorrow the wise decisions in uh, the involving eternal consequences and then uh, so that'll be tomorrow's uh, um, topic as we conclude for this week on wise decisions and then next week we'll go into a whole new topic titled faithfulness uh, week 8 so amen that'll be a New topic next week, faithfulness. <clears throat> Amen. All right. And then uh, the hymn for uh, tomorrow will be titled, Are You Washed in the Blood? Amen. This is a good hymn uh, here, Are You Washed in the Blood? And then um, the special one will be, Who is on the Lord's Side? Amen. From uh, today's topic about uh, Korah and Moses and, and all that. So, uh, Are You Washed in the Blood? And that's tomorrow's hymn. And then, uh, so let's see, uh, so that's it. And then uh, if you want to get a copy of that book and then the um, Daily Strength volumes here, there's four volumes to this series of books. And this is volume one. 
If you want to get those, they're available on MelodyPublications.com. That's how you can get a copy of those books. And then the Scripture Song book and CDs are available online at www.DailyScriptureSongs.com. That's Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website, Missionaries of Port Kaituma, Guyana. And then the Baptist Spread is available online to get a subscription going by going to www.BaptistSpread.com or www.TimGreenMinistries.org. And that second website has other books available on it. So amen. And then, of course, the book that you need to really get into is the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God. And pray beforehand that the Lord will show you what he wants you to see as you're looking through it and studying it and uh, get rooted deep into God's Word and let it uh, take uh, root in inside you and your whole soul, your soul and your mind and your heart. Amen. All right. So first book to get into. Praise the Lord. All right, well, that's it for today. So thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. And pray for the ministries we'll be doing uh, this weekend. Uh, uh, a few of us will be going out to this fair over in Sanford, uh, Florida, to go um, hand out gospel tracts to those uh, attending the fair um, there in Sanford. So pray for that uh, ministry. We do that every year when the fair comes around. And then also for the regular ministries in DeLand and St. Augustine and Daytona Beach and all those ministries. And, uh, and if you... Uh, uh, have a ministry that you do, or if you want to start a ministry, well, you can go out and hand out gospel tracts today. Amen. Go tell somebody about Jesus right now. So, praise the Lord. All right. So, pray for those uh, ministries and pray for you, and you pray for me. Amen. And uh, and pray for each other and be in unity, uh, far far away or together. Amen. All right. Well, thanks again for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you. Until next time. Bye bye for now.